Good morning, everyone. I uh, hope everyone's having a fantastic morning uh, this day, uh, at least as good of a morning as it potentially could be for, for everyone. Um, so just wanted to start off and uh, thank everyone for being over here. Uh, we are at the Orange County Hispanic Chamber uh, Commercial Commerce uh, Commercial Real Estate Group. Uh, a little background on this uh, this particular group. And so the Orange County Hispanic Chamber is the only group that I know of that can pull in about 200 people in a matter of a couple of days, right? And so um, as a professional, as a commercial real estate professional, uh, it's not as easy to comb through all those people, uh, especially the larger uh, Orange County mix of uh, members and prospective members that are part of the chamber. So what we did is we put together a uh, a, a small committee or a group um, that under the umbrella of the Orange County Hispanic Chamber and bringing those that are involved in the commercial real estate in industry and putting them in one place into one room um, and getting an opportunity, a chance to get everyone get to to meet each other, right? So that's that's kind of how this group was formed, and this group group started probably, sheesh, probably about seven years ago, Earl, uh, somewhere around there. It's it's been some time, and so uh, we do this meeting uh, monthly. Uh, we'll bring in a speaker, talk about a various topic, and so that um, we'll go ahead and and uh, get this party started. Chris, how you doing on your side over there? Got those, got those presentation jitters. How's that sound? <laughs> well, that's I'm uh, sure you've been there. That's what makes you a professional. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. do you you want to do a quick intro and tell us who you are? I am a commercial advisor up in Auburn, California, also a business broker with EXP Commercial. And I have been in technology for almost 50 years. So I started when I was a kid. In fact, uh, I did a hostel takeover in the Silicon Valley. So I was an executive in the Silicon Valley for uh, part of my life until I retired when I was 42. And so technology is kind of something I'm passionate about and I lose sleep over. How's that sound? <laughs> Well, it's very good. Um, and I, I can tell you, uh, you know, Chris is, uh, has been amazing uh, as far as not just uh, at his business, as far as uh, doing deals, but uh, really understanding technology and really growing his platform, you know, across, uh, you know, the United States and maybe across the globe as well. And so I, I've had a, a good opportunity to spend some time with Chris and, and uh, the, the more time I spend with him, I'm very appreciative. Uh, because he's a wealth of knowledge, and I'm very thankful that he's not only here today, but uh, I get to see him as often as I do. So, Chris, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you the floor, if you're ready, uh, to go ahead and uh, get started. Absolutely. And okay. that gift card I promised you for the nice words, it's in the mail. There you go. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. So, technology. Te I love technology, and even when it doesn't work, it's still fun. The good news about today and having a little technology issue is that I now have the recording, so I will be able to share the recording with everyone who wasn't able to make it today, and we'll post it up on YouTube also. Technology is one of these things that everything is moving so fast. You know how we talk about um, human years versus dog years? Well, now I think we need to add AI years. Because I think an AI year is about 10 days in human time because things are moving so fast. I've given a couple of talks on artificial intelligence um, since the beginning of the year. And this is every time it's like brand new information. Back in the 90s, I did a weekly radio show called The Computer Connection, America's friendliest computer talk show. Had a lot of fun doing that every week. And every week, it was just so much fun because there was always things to talk about that were new and exciting. And so that's the way I look at artificial intelligence is it's moving so fast. Now, how many of you just um, by a show of hands or put in the chat, actually, if you're using artificial intelligence and maybe just put down um, what it is you're using. Are you using chat GBT? Are you using built-in AI that's in, um, say, Canva? Have you gotten access yet to the Bing AI and started using the new Bing AI? You know, what, what are the things that you're using? 
because I think that the future really belongs to people who are early adopters to this. And by early adopters, I want to really emphasize the fact that I don't believe that you need to go out and spend a lot of money because just recently I've been seeing a lot of people say, hey, come watch my my webinar and it's only $97 or $17 and 76 cents or, or whatever it is. And there is so much information that's available complimentary right now that you really don't have to go out and spend any money while you're trying to figure out what is going on with this stuff. There were two really interesting interviews that came this week that I would encourage you to go look at. The first one, I think was, it was thoughtful and it was something that um, they really dived in and talked about some of the issues. I wouldn't call it a fluff piece, okay? And that was the Elon Musk interview by Tucker Carlson on the Fox network. And um, you can see that for free by going to foxnation.com, signing up for a trial, and then looking for Tucker Carlson today or just searching for Elon Musk. It's about an hour and a half interview, an hour and 27 minutes, something like that. But it was a really good interview and Elon express some serious concerns that he's having with artificial intelligence. And he is, has been at the forefront of artificial intelligence for you know decades. In fact, OpenAI, I'm sure all of you are familiar with OpenAI, right? That is the company that used to be a nonprofit. Now it's a for-profit. Um, Microsoft made a huge investment into it, billions of dollars. So Microsoft now is heavily influencing, if not controlling, what is going on with AI development at OpenAI. Google, they had the deepest breadth of engineers and everything in AI for a long time. And so CBS 60 Minutes did a, I, I looked at it, I thought it was really interesting, but it was really a puff piece. I mean, it was like, softball pitches, there was no criticism, and Google deserves a lot of criticism in my mind. I mean, a lot everything out in tech, you know, needs to be looked at with a critical eye, not meaning bash it, but looking at it with discernment and saying, hey, is is what the executive's doing really in our best interest? You know, that's the way I look at it. I will be sharing an email for those of you who are interested afterwards. And actually, when I post this to YouTube, I will put links to some of these other, other resources in there. AI is transforming our society, significantly transforming our society. And I like to think of it as the difference that we had that you guys many probably can relate to. I remember in high school being in class for learning how to type. And we had IBM Selectric typewriters in 1976, I believe it was. And the typewriters were all brand new. And before, like the year before I took typing, they were using manual typewriters. You know, the people who were using the IBM Selectric, they were just so much ahead of everyone using the old manual <coughs> typewriter. Then when I was in college, we started using computers. I was one of the first people to use a computer in college. And I graduated in 1983. And I was the very first person that petitioned the English department to use the line printer. Now, I don't know if any of you remember what line printers were, but they printed an entire line of text and they didn't have lowercase descenders. Now, some of you don't know what a lowercase descender is. And that means like the P's and the Q's and the G's where it dips down below the baseline with the tail, that's a lowercase descender. And so they actually said, yes, you can do your English term papers using the line printer. I was the first person to do it. And I used the little Edlin editor on the HP 3000, which was super rudimentary to, compared to what we're doing today, of course. But back then it was amazing technology. We moved from that to in 1983, when I graduated, the PC came out and we started using IBM PCs. And I remember using Peach Text and how 
Um, I was able to work in my new job as a fresh college graduate in financial planning, and I didn't have to hire a secretary. And all the guys that were in the office around me, they all had secretaries. And so they, they had to, you know, they were spending a lot of money on labor that I wasn't spending. I spent, you know, it was like $8,000 for a PC back in those days, you know, and it was really rudimentary compared to what we do today. But we, we look at that progress and what has happened, what's going to happen in artificial intelligence is going to be much more profound. And I'm going to share my screen now. Chat GPT is what people have been talking about. This is like the first huge um, AI tool that, that really garnered a lot of public attention. It was released in November of last year, just before Christmas. I'm pretty well plugged into stuff, and I didn't hear about this until January. But once I heard about it and saw the stuff that it could do, I was like, wow, this is really cool. What I've done is I've prepared some, some things here to prompt it, just to show some of the things. And, and because I want to show real life experience, I'm, gonna, I'm not just going to show you, oh, look, this is what's really cool and works. I'm also going to show you this doesn't work. One of the things that just fascinates me to death is the fact that AI is biased. It's really super biased. In fact, in some of the interviews, not just the Elon Musk interview with uh, Tucker Carlson, but also the interview with Google, they talked about AI actually lying to people and making things up. And they're calling it hallucinations, which I think is just hilarious. So the AI is hallucinating. It's thinking something is real and it's not. And I'm going to show you an example of that a little bit. The other thing that is fascinating is the deep fakes. In fact, I just saw an article last night where a photographer won a um, photography contest. The contest, he won the contest using an artificially uh, generated photo that was so good that he won this national contest. Um, so deep fakes, hallucinations, and just outright lies is something that you have to be careful of. And so anything you generate in artificial intelligence, don't just take it at face value, go look at it and make sure that it's real and that, that things, are, things are accurate. One of the things that, that really bugs me is the fact that it doesn't want to help me prospect. I mean, how many of you would agree, just type yes in the chat so I know that you're there with me on this. How many of you agree that lead generation is the lifeblood of what we're doing? It's absolutely the lifeblood of what we do. I am I actually have two full-time staff people that all they do is lead generation for me. They start at eight o'clock in the morning and they work an eight hour shift. I have a database that I'm pulling from of almost 12 million business owners across the United States who got uh, PPP loans. You guys are all familiar with the PPP loans, right? Many of you probably got PPP loans. Well, you're in that database if you got a PPP loan. The database gives me the company name, the number of employees, the loan amount, the address, but it doesn't give me who the contact person is. It doesn't give me their contact information. It doesn't give me the, the, name, the phone number for the company. And so I've got two full-time staff and all they're doing is they're finding that extra information that's not out there. And they're using Google search. They're using Bing AI. They're using people finder. You know, they're using these different uh, resources. They're searching to see if people have a LinkedIn profile or a Facebook profile and what is on there. And so it's really fascinating to me at this point in time, AI chat GPT is programmed not to let you see that personal information. It refuses to let you see it. In fact, let me see if this is the right screen. One of the things that I found in with AI is that don't count on it working when you're in a live situation. I've been in so many demonstrations where 
the presenter is trying to present and then the AI doesn't work. So I've got a, a Google document that I have off screen that you can see. I'm just going to use Gary as my guinea pig. And so here we are, you can see, I just uh, pasted into the, the box. Tell me about Gary Martinez with Ashwell Associates in California. And of course we get an error message. And, and Ashwell is spelled with an I, just so you know. Uh, I, yes, Asheville. that's actually an intentional thing to show you okay. that um, even though you make mistakes, See, look, it corrected it right here. It put it with, oh, hold it, no, it didn't do it. It did yesterday. All right, so now it doesn't want to do it because I'm not giving it enough information, right? Yep, I think so. So that was what it told me yesterday. It was like, hey, we, uh, you have to give me more information. I can only work with public figures. So it wanted to have me narrow in and give an ethical reason why I want to know about Gary. So it apologizes. Then it goes ahead and it talks about the real estate firm and that Gary actually is a commercial real estate advisor and he is, probably has experience. And you know that's kind of where, where it left. It, it won't go out and find this information. Um, a lot of times it will give the, um, it'll correct things like Ashwell spelling it wrong. And it'll come back and say, oh, you meant this. All right. And one other thing that's really fascinating, how many of you have ever been in Toastmasters? Um, and Toastmasters, I was in Toastmasters. I was one of the, like, what do they call them? District managers or something like that. I was overseeing several clubs. And we have these competitions in Toastmasters where they would say, we're going to give you a subject. You have no idea what the subject is. And you're going to have 30 seconds to think about this subject. And then you have to start talking. You have to talk for over two minutes. I don't remember, it was two or three minutes. Gary, do you remember how long it is? But it's extemporaneous um, speaking. And when you are in that situation and they give you this subject, you have to think and you start talking while you're thinking and you're putting your thoughts together. And that's exactly what GPT does. Is it is putting things together and it's anticipating what the next thing should be. Now, because of the way that um, AI works in stringing things together, using probability analysis to tell you what the next thing should be and then saying it, it, it repeats itself a lot. It gives weird answers. And the next wave that we just started seeing about two weeks ago is research where they are... Um, they're having AI now use memory and they're putting the first answer in memory and saying, take a look at your first answer, read through the whole thing and now rewrite it and make it better. And so they're doing iterative um, results, which is really cool. And so that's a lot of fun. And then the other thing that just happened is the AI tools are calling other AI tools to do things that the first tool can't do. So for example, ChatGPT is not good at math. Remember in elementary school having word problems? And word problems were fascinating and I was never good at word problems. You know, it's like you have a train going east at 57 miles an hour, you have another one that just left uh, St. Louis going west at 103 miles an hour. And, you know, where are they going to meet? And what's their combined speed and asking questions about the trains? I was never good at that stuff. Well, chat GPT sucks at it too. But if you say, instead of just saying, hey, here's the two trains and here's what you want, 
what we're looking for, but you actually go through and you step through the reasoning. So you're giving it a what what is called a chain of thought to follow. So you say, here's a word problem. Here's how to solve it step by step. It can then give, get the right answer. And then you can give it another word problem that's similar to that. And you can say, using the same chain of thought that I showed you in this last word problem, solve this one. And it'll work. It's really fascinating. But the other thing that's really fascinating is when AI calls other programs and they work together. Now, I do not expect anyone here to be like have a programming background. There probably is actually, but most of us are not professional programmers. We're professional real estate agents. That's what we want to do is we want to do real estate. I have a little bit of experience because of my tech background. In fact, back in 1996, and I remember 1996, it was August 1st. And the reason is, is because my daughter was born on August 1st of 1996. So I can't forget that, right? My youngest child. And she was born in the morning. And that evening, I hosted a meeting with 167 people. And we were talking about the internet. I mean, the internet was like just breaking into the scene. People didn't know about it. I was hosting this radio show. So I said, hey, let's all get together once a month and let's talk about the internet. And so we had net night. And seeing the progress that we've been making since then and seeing how, how things are, are happening is just fascinating to me. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna show you another example here. And this kind of puts everything together. So this is called Agent GPT. It's designed for people who are not programmers so that you can simply put in um, the name of the, of the chat bot or AI program that you want to have and then give it a goal and then hit deploy and see what happens. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do a people finder because that's something that I do every day, something that I have my staff do every day and I want this thing to work. And this comes closer to working than what we just tried with ChatGPT but let's see how far it gets. And I'm gonna go ahead and read this to you so you can see it because the, the box is kind of small. And one of the things that I've found is that you have to give artificial intelligence enough information so that it can give you a, a meaningful result. So I'm asking, I, so people search your GPT, and the idea here is search public information on the internet about a person. Include websites, social sites, contact information, including phone numbers, email addresses. Um, document the findings with URLs, then summarize the information so I can build rapport with them when I meet them in person. And then I say, start with Christopher Evo, commercial real estate agent in Auburn, California. So one of the things that I learned about 20 years ago or whenever it was that that search engine started is it's a good idea to search yourself because you know if the results are correct or not. Wouldn't you agree? Everyone type yes in the chat box that you're still listening and that you agree that searching yourself is a great way to start. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit deploy agent and let's see what happens. So it's working on a goal. It's searching public information on the internet about a person. and See how fast that thing is going? It's like zip, zip, zip. And you can see it's thinking here as it goes from one task to another. And in just a couple, it, it doesn't take very long for this to do this. And we'll see what happens. Oh, bunch of information popping up. Okay. And you can see over here the tasks. Search social media, including LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, for accounts associated with Christopher Evo, commercial real estate agent in Auburn, California. 
scrape real estate websites such as Zillow, Realtor.com, Redfin. This is one of my pet peeves about AI is it doesn't distinguish between residential and commercial real estate. It thinks everyone's a residential agent and that all these sites work for everything. All right, utilize online directories like the yellow pages, white pages, phone for phone numbers and email addresses, blah, 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 blah. Use online directories, it does it again. Utilize social media, it did that before. Utilize LinkedIn. Okay, so it's moving from one thing to another. All right, and then here, if you want to, um, to do this, you can also put in what's called an API, Application Programming Interface Key, so that it will go to a paid site. I'm only using free things in the demonstration today, but it goes to a paid site so that you can um, see that. All right, can everyone see the PDF that just popped up? Okay. Yes. So this is the output of what happened in a PDF. So here was the goal that we put in. And then it started searching the social media platforms. And it says it, so it searched them. And, oh, look at this. It has a LoopNet place that it looked to find me on LoopNet. And it found me on realtor.com, apparently. I'm not a realtor, so that's interesting that it found me on realtor.com. And then it has a LinkedIn profile that it says is associated with me. All right, so that's, that's fascinating. But I can tell you that this LinkedIn profile is not me. That's not my LinkedIn profile. And I do have a very active LinkedIn profile. I've got over 12,000 connections. And I just launched a newsletter on LinkedIn on March 13th. And that has 1,400 subscribers already. And then it says it searched these other places, but it couldn't find any anything connected with me. And then it has a phone number. It's a phone number that I have never seen before in my life. And it has an email address that has never been my email address. So there, is that fascinating or is that fascinating? Because you can go to Google or to Bing and you can do a search on me and you can find information that's actually accurate. And so, and this was one of the things I did appreciate about the 60 minutes thing is they did say, have AI do some searches. And then they said they went back to the office and they were reviewing the information. They realized that the books that, um, Google Bard, their Google's AI tool recommended, they didn't exist. They just made them up. They hallucinated about them. All right. Very, very fascinating. All right. So let's go back. And I guess I've got a couple other things I want to show you. Um, so this is Bing AI. If you have gotten into Bing and if you're in the, in the, actually, I'm going to open up a brand new Bing here for you, just so you can see, so I can show you. All right, see the Bing logo up here in the left corner, and right next to it, it says chat. Well, if you have not gone into Bing and not hit chat, you may not have access to it. And so I recommend that you go into Bing, you hit chat, and if it says it's putting you on a wait list, get on the wait list, all right? Because every time I go in and search for stuff on Bing now, I pretty much use Bing chat because it's enhanced with artificial intelligence, all right? So let's, This is, I did this last night just so we, uh, so you're clear. And I said, find commercial real estate listings represented by Gary Martinez with Ashwell Associates. And I spelled it wrong again. And here's what it said. It said, sure, I can help you with Gary. And it spelled it correctly, Gary. You can compliment Bing there for spelling it correctly. And it has your personal website, gary-martinez.com. That's your site, right, Gary? 
That's me. Yep. yep, that's me. Okay, cool. All right. And it talks about properties and it gives an address on Orangewood. Are you still, are you on Orangewood? Well, we moved, but no, it's an old address. All right. But it's actually an accurate address. And is that phone number an accurate phone number for you or your company? That's a good number for me. Yep. All right. And then it says you have some listings here. Yep. So do those listings look like they're current or are some of those out of date? Those all look uh, accurate. They're, they're not current, but they're all properties that I've worked on. Okay. So not all of them are, are current then. Right. All right. So then what I did, and so this is, I'm showing you this because if you're out searching for property and you know that Gary is an SIOR and he's a good source for looking for industrial stuff, he might be a great place to start. Right, Gary? Absolutely. Okay. So because he probably has some pocket listings and he knows of some off-market stuff. So you want to go figure that out. And so let's just say that, oh, this here one on Orangewood looks interesting. So I told Bing, I gave it the address, the um, showcase link for it, for the property, and said, summarize this property for me. And I think this is really cool because when Bing AI first started a month ago, maybe a little bit over a month ago, you couldn't put a link into it and ask it to go look at the link and tell you information about it. So now it goes in and it grabs information about that. And then I'm, let's say that I'm trying to impress um, Gary because I'm a, I'm an internet guru and I want him to hire me. So I say, okay, I'm going to, I want to write blog posts for Gary, or maybe you want to write blog posts for yourself. So you have, you put in information about the property You say, write a blog post for me. And it comes out and it writes a pretty decent start for a blog post. And again, this is something that you always want to look at and make sure that the information is accurate because the AIs, they will just make stuff up. That's totally untrue. Um, it's really fun when you're looking at people's resumes and you're like, oh, here's the resume and they work, they, it has them working at six places where they've never worked before. All right, we're almost out of time. We've got like five minutes left. And so I've shown you kind of a glimpse of the future. And I, I want to give you real quick a uh, couple of things. Number one, has anyone gained anything valuable from this so far today? Something that you can take and use to help you grow your business? If you have, put yes in the box, please. All right. So I'm, I'm getting a couple of yeses. So thank you for that. Um. In June, we are going to be doing, and I say we, meaning the RCAOC. Gary happens to be the president of the RCAOC, which is the Realtor Commercial Alliance of Orange County. And we're doing a workshop. And it's going to be a two to three hour workshop where we really dive in. And we're going to, like today, I mean, this stuff I've been showing you, it's all current, right? I mean, a lot of this stuff has just been introduced in the last week. So it's really new. And we're going to be doing that and showing the tools. And I think by the time June comes around and we have that updated workshop, we're going to see Microsoft Word, Google Docs, Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets, all having artificial intelligence included in them, all right? And I think that's going to be really fascinating and it's going to really improve our productivity. And so the first thing that I recommend everyone do is look at the tools that you're already using and see how AI is built into the tools and what can you do to use AI that's built into the tools, all right? And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give a couple of links. And the first link that I want to give you is so that you can be on a list and hear about upcoming events. So if you just go to the link right there, 
um, things that I'm involved in. I have a newsletter and I'd love for you to be on the newsletter so I can keep you updated. The other thing, Gary, can you put the link in for RCAOC? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Um, and the other thing that I'd appreciate you guys doing, if you wouldn't mind, is I do have videos on YouTube. And here's my YouTube channel. And one of the first videos I did was looking at being AI in chat GPT and talking about the differences and how to how to get access to both for free. So that's there. There's a lot of other interesting videos. I mean, I've started putting some out there. And so I really appreciate if you take a look at those. Um, we are coming up here at the top of the hour. Thank you so much for bearing with us today as we had the issues with our link. We are have been recording this and um, we will be posting this to YouTube so everyone can see it. And so thank you very much for everyone for that. Gary, I'm going to turn this back over to you and let you close out our meeting for us. Okay. Yeah, no, this is uh, fantastic, Chris. And thank you so much for this information. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm a true believer uh, in AI and, you know, just like everything else that we've seen, you know, with um, uh, Best Buy, uh, you know, they they were a company that was going down and going down pretty quickly uh, until they really made changes within their business. Uh, and really adapted on to um, how to use technology to work with their business, right? We think of Bed Bath & Beyond, a company that really did not do that. And, and it's just uh, been on a, a quick spiral down. So um, the, the lessons I think we could learn from those larger companies um, is that technology is inevitable. It's going to change, right? It's going to change our business. And so as, us as commercial real estate professionals, we need to adapt and change with the times. This is not going to get rid of our business, right? But if we don't allow uh, this technology to uh, incorporate or be incorporated into our own business, right, then we could find ourselves uh, in, in uh, a lot of trouble. So I would definitely encourage everyone to take advantage of this time that Chris has presented us. Um, you know, get logged into his YouTube, YouTube or follow him on, on there along with keep your information on there, because I think this is information that's definitely going to change uh, on how we market our ourselves, our companies, and, you know, our properties. And so uh, with that, this was fantastic. Um, I'm just looking at the time. I want to be mindful of everybody's time and want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, again, this is uh, the commercial real estate group that's under the Orange County Hispanic Chamber. We do this once a month. Uh, we'll go ahead and get your information. And if it's okay, uh, we're going to put you on our list to continue to invite you to our monthly meetings that we have here. Uh, also want to encourage you to go to RCOC uh, and sign up for Chris's workshop as well um, and get two to three hours and take a deep dive and roll up your sleeves to learn how to utilize this technology for your business. And so hey, with Gary, that, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'd like to encourage everyone to quickly put their contact information, especially their email address into the chat. So if they want to be on your mailing list for uh, the Hispanic Chamber um, yes. for the monthly commercial real estate updates that that you have their email addresses for that, okay? Yeah, please, yeah, everyone. Yeah. Um, and also and for everyone as well. save the chat. Yeah, I was about to say that. Yep, save the chat and save everyone's information and utilize this time to connect with people. I see some people there that are different parts of the country, right? And we get opportunities at different parts of the country as well. So uh, let's let's get a chance to meet some people. But um, all right, with that, just want to thank everyone for your time. Chris, thank you so much. This was fantastic. Uh, and thank you for everything you do. And uh, we'll go ahead and sign off now. But thank you. Have a great day. See you soon. All right. Thanks. Everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.